Hi guys, welcome back. In this video, we're going to see active information gathering. So if you guys missed my previous videos, chapter one got four videos and chapter two got three videos. So and chapter three, passive information gathering. So if you guys missed these vi previous videos, please go and watch to get better understand before you continue this video. Okay, so let's go to the topic now. Active information gathering. In this video, we will explore techniques that involve direct interaction with the target services. We will look, we will look at some of the more common active information gathering techniques, including port scanning, a DNS, SMB, NFS, SMTP, and SNMP enumerations. DNS enumerations. DNS is the naming system on the internet. It is a distributed database responsible for translating user-friendly domain names into your IP address. When a browser needs to resolve your host name like www.example.com, it passes the uh, host name to the operating system DNS client which forward the request to the external DNS server it configured to ease which forward the request to the external DNS server it configured to use. The first server in the chain is known as the DNS recursor and it is and is responsible for returning the result to the DNS client. The recursor queries the authoritative the authoritative name server which contain the DNS record in a local database known as zone file. There are typically two zones for each domain. The forward lookup zone is used to find the IP address of a specific host name and the reverse lookup zone is used to find the host name of specific IP address. Once the DNS recursor provides the DNS client with the IP address uh, for www.example.com, the browser can contact the uh, correct web server. At at its IP address and load the web page in, uh, interacting with a DNS server. Each domain can use different type of DNS record. Due to the wealth of information contained within DNS, it is often lucrative target for active information gathering. DNS enumeration is the process of locating all the DNS servers and their corresponding records for an organization. A company may have both internal and external DNS servers that can yield information such as username, computer names, and IP address of potential target systems. So first, uh, let's demonstrate uh, this. We will use the host command first. Okay, so let's say the example domain. Uh, what I'm using is uh, simcast.com okay so we can use the host command to find the IP address of the uh, websites so now you guys can see the IP address so by default the host command looks for uh, looks for an a records okay a host record but what if we wanted to find the uh, other record like a max record or text record so we can use the uh, host t. Sorry for that. From DMX, let's say some Microsoft.com. So uh, you guys can see here. Uh, so mail is handled by ten. Okay. So let's say if I use a different text. okay so you can use this uh, type of command it's very useful so let's try with the different command let's say name server so let's say if you want to find the name server so you guys can see here the name server so let's say uh, if you want to look up the time to live TTL of a domain 
uh, you guys can use the hyphen V so hyphen V hyphen T A Google dot com okay this this uh, command helps to look up the uh, TTL of a domain okay so let's try to search based on the IP version 4 or IP version 6 protocol for that host iPhone 4 google.com so now you guys can see here so so this is a uh, version 4 and then IP version 6 okay you guys can also change uh, 6 here so it will take a uh, few seconds to get okay so so now let's see uh, how to look up the name server that are responsible for the zone for this so we can use the NS lookup and then hyphen type so what type is a name server so then we can try the uh, let's say some microsoft.com okay so now let's say if you want to look up the uh, start of authority for for a domain so let's say ns lookup hyphen type equal to soa so same cause dot com okay so all the information the the piece of information is very useful when you guys doing your penetration test so let's see now how to look up your mail uh, MX record uh, using the NS lookup what type it is MX mail server same class example.com so there is no answer so let's say I try with a different website oops sorry so you guys can see now so we can also use a T command uh, to look up a DNS server information using a, D, a domain information cropper so let's see so sim cost.com so you, you guys can see the result so okay so there is a lot of examples out there uh, using your dick and uh, NS lookup you know so we can now uh, there is also other tools uh, that can be used to perform similar queries and look lookups or uh, DNE num and then DNS recon uh, what what we see uh, earlier so multigo those tools are very useful okay automating lookup now that we have some initial data from the uh, example.com so we have used uh, Microsoft and simcast.com domain so we can continue to use additional DNS queries to discover more host names and IP address belonging to the same domain for example we know that the domain has a web server with the host name uh, www.simcast.com uh, let's try not me simcast.com okay first we query a valid host name and received in received an IP resolution response by contrast okay our second query 
return NX domain error indicating that your public that your public DNS record doesn't exist for that host name. Now that we understand how to search for valid host name, we can automate our efforts. Forward lookup brute force. Brute force is a trial and error technique that seeks to find valid information including directories on a web server, username and password combinations or in this case valid DNS records. By using a word list that contains common host names, we attempt to guess DNS records and check the response for a valid host name. In the example in the, in, in the example so far we used forward lookups which requests uh, which which request the IP address of a host name to query both a valid and a invalid host name. If host successfully resolves a name to an IP this could be an indicate of a functional server. We can automate the forward DNS lookup of common host name using the host command in a bash liner. So we will use uh, the short list of uh, potential host name for demonstration purpose. So let's see the list file. So we can also use the, uh, the command, the one liner. Okay. So let's enter. So we can also see the uh, the host. Okay. So www dot megacon. So uh, this our onliner uh, command will look through our list and attempt to resolve each host name with the simplified word list. We discount entries for www uh, mail or uh, router you know so as you guys can see here the host names FTP OWA and proxy however were not found much more comprehensive word list are uh, available as part of the cyclist project which can be installed with uh, apt as you guys can see here okay reverse lookup brute force our DNS forward brute force enumeration revealed a set of scattered IP addresses in the same approximate range. If the DNS administrator of uh, megacorp.com configured PTR records for the domain, we could scan the approximate, uh, approximate range with the reverse lookups to request the host name for each IP address. So now let's see the example command. So to bet to get better understand. So let's use this IP address here. Okay. So let's enter. So you guys can see here. Okay, so this one line of bash command uh, to use a loop uh, to scan IP address 50 through 100. So we will use grab uh, hyphen V to filter out invalid result by showing only entries that don't contain the not found message. So we have successfully managed to resolve a number of IP address. Uh, to valid host using reverse DNS lookup. If we were performing an assessment, we could further ex uh, extrapolate this result and might scan for mail one and mail two, mail three, etc. And reverse lookup positive result. That point is that these type of scans are often cyclical. We expand our search based on any information we receive at every round. Okay. DNS zone transfer. 
A zone transfer is basically a database replication between related DNS server in which the zone file is copied from a master DNS server to a slave server. The zone file contains a list of all the DNS names configured for the zone. Zone transfer should only be allowed to the authorized slave DNS server. But many administrators misconfigure their DNS server and in these cases, anyone asking for a copy of the DNS server zone will usually receive one. This is equivalent to handling a hacker the corporate network layout on a silver platter. Okay. So all the names, address, and functionality of the servers can be exposed to your praying eyes. A successful zone transfer doesn't directly result in a network breach, although it does facilitate the processes. The host name command can be used uh, to perform a zone transfer with the dash hyphen L option followed by the domain name and a DNS server. Let's begin by finding the DNS server for Megacorp 1. So just for example. So this domain has three DNS server NS1, NS2, NS3. Let's try a zone transfer against each one. So we will use host dash hyphen L. So megacorp one. So we are using the uh, host dash L to attempt the zone transfer. Okay. So unfortunately. It looks like the first name server uh, NS1 doesn't allow zone transfer. So our attempt has failed. It's refused. Let's try the same steps using the second name server. So this server does allow zone transfer and provide a full dump of the zone file for the megacorp1.com domain. So it delivered it delivers a, a convenient list of uh, IP address and corresponding DNS host names. So the megacorp1 domain has a very few DNS servers to check. However, some large organization might host many DNS server or we might want to attempt zone transfer request against all the DNS server in a given domain. Okay. Bash scripting can help with this task. To attempt a zone transfer with the host command, we need two parameters, a name server address and a domain name. So. We can get a clean list of the name server for a given domain with the host command and then piping the result into cut. Okay, so just enter. Taking this a step further, we can write a bash script to automate the process of identifying the relevant name server and attempt a zone transfer for, from each. So, yeah. So let's make the script executable and run it against a uh, uh, megacorp.com. So we have created the script uh, DNS. This script will identify the name server and attempt to zone transfer against each one of them. So let's make the script executable and run it against megacorp1. And then create just a few lines in the script has automated our task quite nicely. Relevant tools in Call Linux. 
relevant tools in Kali Linux. There are several tools in Kali Linux that can automate DNS enumeration. Two notable examples are DNS Recon and DNS Enum, which have useful options that we will explore in the following section. DNS Recon DNS Recon is an advanced modern DNS enumeration script written in Python. We can attempt a zone transfer with the DNS Recon by using the dash uh, D options to specify a domain name and dash T options uh, to specify the type of enumeration to perform. In this case, a zone transfer. So let's enter. So we have managed to perform a successful DNS zone transfer against uh, uh, megacorp1.com domain. The result is basically a full dump of the zone file for the domain. So let's try to brute force uh, additional host names with the list we used previously for forward lookups. So now we will use the uh, dash D capital D options to specify a file name uh, containing potential uh, subdomain strings and dash D to specify the brute force enumerations okay so let's enter great so our brute force attempt has finished and we have managed to resolve a few host names as you guys can see here. DNS Enum. DNS Enum is another popular DNS enumeration tool. To show you a different output, to show you a different output, let's run DNS Enum against the zone transfer.me domain, which specifically allow zone transfer. We simply need to pass the domain off interest to DNS Enum. These enumeration tools are both capable and straightforward. Take some time to practice uh, each before continuing. Port scanning. Port scanning is the process of inspecting TCP or UDP ports on a remote machine with the intention of detecting what services are running on the target and what potential attack vector may exist. Using a proper port scanning methodology can significantly improve our efficiency as penetration testers while also limiting many of the risk. Depending on the scope of the engagement, instead of running a full port scan against a target network, we can start by only scanning for port 80 and 443. With a list of possible uh, web servers, we can run a full port scan against uh, these servers in the background while performing other enumerations. Once the full port scan is completed, once the full port scan is complete, we can further narrow our scan to probe for more and more information with each subsequent scan. The result of one scan determines the type and scope of the next scan. TCP UDP scanning. We will begin our exploration of port scanning with a simple TCP and UDP port scan using Netcat. It should be noted that Netcat is not a port scanner but it can be used in such a rudimentary way. Since it's already present on many systems, we can repurpose some of its functionality to mimic a basic port scan when we don't need a fully featured port scanner. However, there are far better tools dedicated to port scanning that we will explore in the detail as well. Okay, TCP scanning. 
The simplest TCP port scanning technique, usually called connect scanning, relies on the three-way TCP handshake mechanism. In basic terms, a host sends a TCP sync packet to a server on a destination port. If the destination port is open, the server responds with a sync acknowledge packet and the client host sends an uh, acknowledge packet to complete this handshake. If the handshake completes successfully, the port is considered open. So let's launch Wireshark uh, so we can inspect our traffic. So password. So now we will set a capture filter so we can only collect the traffic we are interested in. Okay. So let's enter. So now let's open the new tab. Uh, so now let's run the TCP netcat port scan on port 3388 uh, through 3390. So here the dash W options the dash w options specify the connection timeout in seconds and the dash z options is used to specify zero io mode which will send no data and is used for scanning okay so let's run based on the output we can see that uh, the port 33 Eight nine is open. Okay, while connection on port three three eight eight and three three nine zero timeout. Okay. So now let's return to Wireshark and inspect our capture. In this capture, Netcat sent several TCP sync packet to port three three nine zero three three eight nine. And 3388 on lines you guys can see the first line uh, and then third line okay so the first line and third line and number seven okay yes eight uh. okay Due to a variety of factors including times, timing issues, the packet may appear out of order in Wireshark. Noticing that the server sent a TCP sync uh, uh, acknowledge packet from port 3389 on line 4, you guys can see here, 3389, so sync and acknowledge. So it in, it's indicate that the port is open. The other ports didn't reply with a similar sync acknowledge packet, so we can we can infer that the uh, that they are not open. Finally, uh, on line six, Netcat closed down this connection by sending a thin ACK packet. You guys can see here the thin ACK. Finally. On line 6, uh, Netcat closed down uh, this connection by sending a FinAC packet. So you guys can see here, FinAC packet. So let's stop it. And then so let's open and then clear. UDP scanning. Since UDP is stateless and doesn't involve a three way handshake. The mechanism behind UDP port scanning is different from TCP. Let's run a UDP netcat port scan against port 160 to 162 on a different target. This is done using the only netcat option we haven't seen it. Ifn dash u which indicates a UDP uh, yes hyphen dash u which indicates a UDP scan from the Wireshark capture so now let's run the command and then 
go back to the Wireshark. From Wireshark, from the Wireshark capture, we can see the from the Wireshark capture, we can see that the UDP scan uses a different mechanism than a TCP scan. An empty UDP datagram was sent to specific ports in datagrams uh, line 1, on line 3, and line 5. Okay. If the destination UDP port is open, the datagram will be passed to the application layer and the response received will depend on how the application is programmed to the response. In this example, the application sends no response. However, if the destination UDP port is closed, the target should respond with an ICP port unreachable. As you guys can see in a datagram uh, 2, 4 and 6, the line number 6 is okay that is sent by the UDP IP stack of the target machine. Most UDP scanners tend to use the standard ICMP port unreachable message to infer the status of a target port. However, this method can be completely unreliable when the target port is filtered by a firewall. In fact, in these cases, that scanner will report the target port as open because of the absence of the ICMP message. We will see later how dedicated scanner resolves this issue. Port scanning with Nmap. Nmap is one of the most popular, versatile and robust port scanner available. Some of the Nmap example scans we cover in this, in this video are run using sudo. This is due to the fact that quite a few Nmap scanner options require access to raw socket which in turn require root privilege. Let's explore some port scanning examples to get a better feel for Nmap and its options. Accountability for our traffic. A default Nmap TCP scan will scan the thousand most popular ports on a given machine. Before we start running scans blindly, let's examine the amount of traffic sent by this type of scan. We will scan one of the test machine while using IP tables to monitor the amount of traffic sent to the target. First, we will use the IP table dash capital I option to insert a new rule into the input chain in the first position. Okay, and then dash hyphen uh, dash s to specify a source IP address which is the IP IP addresses we are going to scan and dash uh, iPhone J dash J options accept to allow the traffic to pass first we will use the IP table dash capital I option to insert a new rule into the input chain in the first position and dash s to specify a source IP address which is the IP address we are going to scan and dash j accept to allow the traffic to pass okay so let's enter so we will also add a rule to the output chain so this time we specify the output as the chain and use the dash D to specify the destination IP address. So let's change. Okay. Lastly, we will use the dash capital C option to zero the packet and bytes counters in all chains. Now let's generate some traffic using Nmap. So we will run a default scan by providing the target IP address without any other options. The scan completed and revealed a few open ports. 
Now let's inspect some IP table statistics to get an idea of how much traffic our scan generated. So we will use the dash V option to add some verbosity to our output dash N to enable numeric output and dash capital I sorry a dash capital L to list the rules present in all chain okay enter according to this output the default thousand port scans has generated around 70 kilobytes of traffic let's zero the IP tables packet and bytes counters in all chain again and run another nmap scan So this time we will use the dash P options to specify all TCP ports. Let's enter. So it will take some time. So because uh, it will scan all TCP port 65,535. So the scan is completed. So it took 468, 468 or 14, 14 seconds. Because in this port scan explicitly probing all 65,535 ports, we generated about 4 megabytes of traffic, a significantly higher amount. This result implies that a full Nmap scan of Class C network would result in sending over 1000 uh, megabytes of traffic to the network. However, this full port scan has discovered new ports that were not found by the default TCP scan. Okay. In an ideal situation, a full TCP and UDP port scan of every single target machines would provide the most accurate information about exposed network services. However, this example reveals the need to balance any traffic restrictions such as a slow uplink with the need to discover additional open ports and services. In the next section, we will explore some of Nmap's various scanning techniques. Stealth or Sync Scanning Nmap's preferred scanning technique is a SYN or Stealth Scan. There are many benefits to using a Sync Scan and as it's the default scan technique where when no scan technique is specified and the user has the record raw socket privilege. SYN scanning is a TCP port scanning method that involves sending sync packet to, to various ports on a target machine without completing a TCP handshake. If a TCP port is open, a sync org should be sent back from the target machine informing us that the port is open. At this point, Nmap doesn't bother to send the final org to complete the three-way handshake. To launch a sync scan with Nmap, we, pref we preface the command with sudo and provide the dash s and capital S option. So let's enter the password. So we discussed this uh, uh, topic in previous uh, video, sorry, uh, chapter. Okay, the scan is completed. So because the three way hand, uh, because the three way handshake is never completed the information is not passed because the three way handshake is never completed the information is not passed to the application layer and as a result will not appear in any application logs a yeah, sync scan is also faster and more efficient because fewer packets are sent received okay Note that the term stealth refers to the fact that in the past primitive firewall would fail to lock incomplete TCP connection combined with the 
fact that application logs wouldn't catch the scan. TCP connect scanning. When a user running Nmap doesn't have raw socket privileges, Nmap will default to the TCP connect scan technique described earlier. Since a TCP connect scan makes use of a Berkeley uh, socket API to perform the three-way handshake, it doesn't require elevated privileges. However, because Nmap has to wait for the connection to complete before the API will return the status of the connection. A connect scan takes much longer to complete than a SYN scan. There, there might be times when we need to specifically perform a connect scan. For example, when scanning through a certain type of proxy, we use the dash S and capital T option to start a connect scan. So let's enter. So next we will move on to UDP scanning. UDP scanning. When performing a UDP scan, Nmap will use a combination of two different methods to determine if a port is open or closed. For most port it will use the standard ICMP port unreachable method described earlier by sending an empty packet to a given port. Okay. However, for common ports such as port 161 that used by an SNMP, it will send a protocol specific SNMP packet in an attempt to get a response from the applications that bounds to the port. To perform a UDP scan, the dash S and capital U option uh, is used and sudo is required to access raw sockets. So let's enter. Okay. So the UDP scan also be used in conjunction with a TCP sync scan to build a more complete picture of our target. So in this, uh, in the next section, we will explore technique for handling larger networks or network with the traffic constraints okay network sweeping to deal with large volume of hosts or to otherwise try to convert conserve network traffic we can attempt to probe targets using network sweeping techniques in which we begin with broad scan and use more specific scan against host of interest. When performing a network sweep with Nmap using the dash iPhone and SN option, the host discovery process consists of more than just sending an ICMP echo request. Several other probes are used in addition to the ICMP request. So let's enter. So the scanning started. So the scan is completed. So, so Nmap also sends a TCP sync packet to port 443, a TCP awk packet to port 80, and an ICMP uh, a timestamp request to verify if a host is available or host uh, or not. So searching for a live machine using the grub command on a standard Nmap output can be cumbersome. Instead, let's use Nmap's scrappable output parameter dash O capital G. As you guys can see, right? The dash O and capital G to save this result into a format that easier to manage. So let's enter. Now we can easily grab the text file for machines that are up. So let's check. So you guys can see here the file has saved. We can also sweep for specific TCP or UDP port across the network probing for common services and ports in an attempt to 
locate systems that may be useful or otherwise have known vulner vulnerabilities. So let's enter. So let's clear. So in this scan, uh, we will look for TCP port 80. So this scan tends to be more accurate than a ping sweep. So let's enter. So now the scan is completed. So now we can quickly get a list of IP address that have TCP port 80 open. So we can use this command to save time and network resource. We can also scan multiple IPs probing for a, a short list of common ports. For example, can use this command. For example, let's conduct a TCP connect scan for the top 20 uh, TCP ports with the top ports option and enable OS version uh, detection script scanning and trace route with a dash capital A. The top 20 ports are the top 20 ports are determined by that nmap service file. So let's enter. So it, it will take some time to complete. The top 20 ports are determined by the nmap service file. So with this command, so this file uses a simple format of three white space separated column. The first is the name of the services and the second contain the port number and protocol and the third the port frequency. Okay. So everything after the third column is ignored but is typically used for comments. Okay. Port frequency is based on how often the port was found open during research scan of their internet. At this point, we could conduct a more exhaustive scan against individual machines that are service rich or otherwise interesting. There are many different ways we can be creative with our scanning to conserve bandwidth or low our profile. OS fingerprinting. Nmap has a built-in feature called OS fingerprinting that attempt to cuss the target operating system by inspecting written packet. This is possible because operating system often have slightly different implementation of the TCP stack. And this slight variances create a fingerprint that Nmap can often identify. Nmap will inspect the traffic received from a target machine and attempt to match the fingerprint to the to a known list. So the OS fingerprint option can be enabled with the uh, capital dash O option. So let's enter. So the response suggests so the response suggests that uh, underlying the operating system of the target is either uh, Windows uh, 7 or 10 machine. But that uh, OS fingerprint uh, so not not Please note that uh, OS fingerprint is not always 100% accurate, but a best case attempt consider a more careful examination of the target to confirm an OS fingerprint scan. Banner crapping and service enumerations. We can identify uh, services running on specific ports by inspecting services banners and running various OS and service enumeration scripts against that target. So Nmaps uh, dash S and capital V option probes open ports to determine services and version information. So let's enter.
so the scan is completed okay so the version of the protocol everything so keep in mind that banner uh, banners can be modified by the system administrator as such this can be intentionally set to fake service names in order to mislead a potential attacker nmap scripting engine in short is nsc so the nmap script uh, scripting engine is used to launch user created script in order to automate various scripting tasks so these scripts perform a broad range of function including dns enumeration brute force attacks and even vulnerabilities identifications so nsc scripts are normally located in the users or uh, shares and maps on scripts directory so let's try out a few nsc script to see how they work the smb os uh, discovery script attempt to connect to the SMB service on a target system and determine the operating system another useful and self-explanatory NSC script is DNS uh, zone transfer okay So to, to view more information about a script, we can use the uh, script-help options. These options display a uh, descriptions of the script and a URL where we can find more in-depth information such as script argument and usage examples. For times when internet access is not available, much of this information can also be found in the NSC script file itself. So you guys just play around and take time to explore the various NSC script as many of them are helpful and time saving. Okay, next topic. Mass scan. Mass scan can scan the entire internet in about six minutes transmitting an outstanding uh, 10 million packets per second while it was originally designed to scan the entire internet it can easily handle a class A or B subnet so which is a more suitable target range during a penetration test mass scan is not installed on Kali by default so it must be installed using a apt uh, install uh, let's say uh, sudo apt install so I have already installed the uh, uh, package so uh, I have already installed this uh, mask scan on this machine so since mask scan uh, implements a custom TCP stack and require access to raw socket so so we must run it as a sudo so we can test uh, whether the installation of mask scan is proper okay so we can use this uh, mask scan okay so we can use this command to check this uh, the result it shows is uh, success so, okay so now we will test the performance also offline so this will scan whole IP address subnets but without going into the internet so this won't produce any what result but see the time record for scan when its rate is 100 packets so uh, now let's increase the packet uh, from you know like thousand okay or more clear so now uh, let's increase the rate gradually to uh, thousand or thousand plus okay so then enter so now so this commands really help uh, helpful to 
see how much your network scan can perform compare the time recover for all okay so okay let's see now uh, a range of publicly publicly available Google IPs first we find out first we find out what IP does Google resolve to and then we perform to port scan on the particular range on ports 80 or 443 so let's see host google.com okay so next we substitute the IP found with its range so so we can now use the mask scan and then 216.58.196.024.p80443 oops sorry so we need to use the uh, sudo so now you guys can see so this is most basic scan operation in ma uh, in mass scan. So you can use this to scan any IPs instead of giving the subnet value. So you can give IP range, uh, example 216.58.196.1 uh, dot uh, dot dot one dash two two five. You know, so like this. So uh, this would give an end map. So you guys can use this command to get. Uh, to find the particular port number uh, the whole network to the, to the entire network okay so there is a page in the github so you guys can get a ma mass scan tool from github if you if you cannot find on your linux machine so so this is uh, th in this page you can get more uh, examples command so you just you guys can play around with this command so it's very useful so okay SMB enumeration the security track record of the SMB protocol has been poor for many years due to the complex implementations and open nature from unauthenticated SMB null session in Windows 2000 and XP to your plethora of SMB bugs and vulnerabilities over the year, SMB has seen its fair share of action. Scanning for the NetBIOS services. The NetBIOS service uh, listens on TCP port 139 as well as several UDP ports. It should be notified. It should be noted that. SMB which listens on TCP port 445 is a separate protocol from NetBIOS. NetBIOS is an independent session layer protocol and services that allows computers on a local network to communicate with each other. While modern implementation of uh, SMB can work with uh, work without NetBIOS, NetBIOS over TCP is required for backward compatibility and is often enabled together. For this reason, the enumeration of 3.2 service often goes hand in hand. So we can use uh, we can use Nmap to easily scan for both ports. Okay. So the scan is completed. So there are other more specified, uh, specialized tools for specifically identify NetBIOS information, uh, such as NBT scan. So the dash R option is used to specify the uh, originating UDP port as 137, so which is used to query the NetBIOS name service for valid NetBIOS name. So let's enter. So it's completed. So NBT scan is very fast and returns a lot of useful information. Nmap SMB NSE scripts. Nmap contains many useful NSE scripts that can be used 
uh, to discover and enumerate SMB services. So this script can be found in the nmap script directory. Okay. Here we find several interesting nmap SMB NSC scripts that perform various tasks such as OS discovery and enumeration through SMB. So let's say if you want to find the SMB OS uh, detection. So what OS uh, the server using? So I don't have the server right now. So but uh, you can use this command to uh, uh, get the OS detections. So normally uh, you, you can find the OS uh, informations after this uh, after this uh, port scanning. Okay. So. To check for known SMB protocol vulnerabilities, we can invoke one of the SMB bulb NSC scripts. So let's run it. So, so we will now take a look at SMB uh, uh, MS08-067.NSC, so which uses the script args options to pass argument to the NSC script. So we can just copy. And then nmap v p. So we can use the same port number, but there is a small change. This is a so so this is the command we are going to use the uh, the specific vulnerabilities and the target machine. Let's say if it's a production machine. So I j this is an example. Uh, desktop machine in my test environment okay so please note uh, that by setting the script argument unsafe equals uh, one the script is almost or totally guaranteed to crash a vulnerable system needless to say we, we should exercise extreme caution when enabling these arguments especially when scanning the production systems okay so this is very important. So in this case, I'm using a desktop machine. There is not uh, not much information. So if you guys running the scripts on your production machine, for so if you guys running the script for your production machine, so you will see more information. For example, uh, SMB service is missing at least one critical patch, something like that. Okay. NFS enumeration. NFS is a distributed file system protocol that allows a user on a client computer to access files over a computer network as if they if, as if they were on locally mounted storage. NFS is often used used with the Unix operating system and is generally insecure in its implementation. It can be somewhat difficult to set up securely so it is not uncommon to find NFS shares open to the world. So this is quite convenient for us as a penetration tester as we might be able to leverage this share to collect sensitive information, escalate our privilege and so forth. Scanning for NFS shares. Both port mapper and RPC bind run on TCP port number 111-111. RPC bind maps uh, RPC services to the port on which they listen. RPC processes notify RPC bind when they start. Registering the port they are listening on and the RPC program numbers they expect to serve. The client system then contacts RPC bind on the server with the, uh, with the particular RPC program number, the RPC bind serve redirect the client to the proper port number, often TCP port 2049. So it can communicate with the requested service. So, so we can use Nmap uh, to scan for TCP port 11, uh, 111, 
and run the RPC uh, info NSA script on each server to find service that may have registered with the RPC bind. So let's run. So the scan is completed. So next we will find out how to make uh, use of this information. nmap NFS NSA scripts. Once we find NFS running, we can collect additional information, enumerate NFS uh, services and discover additional services using NSC script found in the nmap script disk, uh, directory. So we can just enter. So we can run all three uh, of the script using a wildcard character in the script name. So let's see what we can uncover with this scan. Okay. So in in my case, uh, I don't have that uh, NFS mounting chart mounting, so that's why it's not showing. But this command is very helpful uh, when you when you guys try to find the uh, NFS uh, related information, meaning uh, mounting information. You know, so SNMP enumeration. Over the years we have found that simple network management protocol is not well understood by many network administrators. This often results in SNMP misconfiguration which can result in significant information leakage. SNMP is based on UDP, a simple stateless protocol and is therefore susceptible to IP spoofing and replay attacks. In addition, the commonly used SNMP protocol 1, 2 and 2C offer no traffic encryption meaning that SNMP information and credentials can easily be intercepted over a local network. Traditional SNMP protocol also have weak authentication schemes and are commonly left configured with default public and private community strings. Now consider that all of the above applies to a protocol which by uh, definitions is meant to manage the network. For all of this reason SNMP is another one of our favorite enumeration protocols. SNMP MIMP tree. The SNMP management information base is a database containing information usually related to network management. Scanning for SNMP To scan for open SNMP ports, we can turn once again to nmap. The dash S capital U option is uh, so the dash S uh, capital U option is used to perform UDP scanning and the open and the open open option dash dash open option is used to limit the output to only display open ports. So let's enter. Alternatively, we can use a tool such as 161 which will attempt a brute force attack against a list of IP address. So, so that's it guys for this video. So we have successfully completed the uh, chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3. So the next video we will see our uh, introduction to buffer overflows. So please don't miss that video. So please subscribe my channel, press the bell button to get more update, share the video to your friends guys. See you bye bye.